Hi, uh, my name is Alan. Uh, I'd like to talk today about uh, nanopsychology. I'd like to identify it, define it, and establish it as a form of psychological thought in American psychological practice. Uh, now, psychology can be defined as the results of social interaction that affect a person's behavior or mental condition. And these results from the interaction are not measurable by the standards currently used in modern psychological uh, research. But they still exist. To give you an example of how difficult it might be to f find out these results I'm talking about, let's compare the size of the Earth to a marble. And now, uh, uh, technology, they compare the size of a marble to the size of the earth as a way to do, for people to understand how small nanoparticles are. So keep that in mind in terms of how nanopsychology affects the behavior of the individual in seemingly a very small way. The difference, however, is a very small psychological impact can really snowball geometrically to have major consequences on an individual's behavior or condition. When we talk about geometric progression, we're talking about a penny being doubled 30 times, like 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, and when by the time you get to 30, it's over a million, or well over a million, or a thousand dollars doubled 10 times, uh, like 2, 4, 8, 16, will be over a million dollars. So we're talking about an, uh, an impact which would be equivalent to a uh, con the conception of a of a um, human being, for example, compared to the results after the human being has grown to the age twenty. Big difference. So. How do we find out what we're talking about if we can't really see it? And we don't have instruments like they do in nanopsychology. Well, let's look at it this way. And there is, a, there is kind of a pun here. Because what I'm talking about is like looking at the sun by way of its reflection. You don't want to look directly into the sun. Well, but the sun exists and it does have an effect, but you just really can't look at it with a telescope directly. And that's kind of the way nanopsychology is. The results are there. They can grow geometrically. But they're difficult to study. So if you have a psychological situation that's difficult to study, you may put it in the realm of philosophy. Now, we believe all kinds of things. And we talk about them. And we expand upon them, like love uh, or wisdom. But they're considered in the realm of uh, philosophy. 
So, another way to look at nanopsychology is the fusion of psychology with philosophy. Because philosophy enables you to extrapolate upon things which cannot be measured scientifically, but which people believe that are there. Now let's get to more specific um, examples in my definition of nanopsychology. Let's say that somebody goes to a party and they receive a smile from, uh, from somebody else. Now, this can have a direct effect on the person's behavior. It may be measured uh, quantitatively by measuring uh, what, a, what people do after they get smiled at. Uh, I think that probably you can have a scientific experiment about that. But what about a form of nonverbal communication that's like a smile, but it's so so small that you can't really perceive it as a smile. But still, there's a vibe. People get vibes all the time that they can't describe. So somebody at a party gives another person a vibe. You can't see the vibe. You can't feel the vibe. But it's there. It's really there. So the question is, what is it? Or, after the vibe is perceived, uh, is there any results that, 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 that you tangibly could could uh, could could feel uh, if you receive if you receive the vibe, and does this have a snowball effect like the geometric progression of a number of numbers uh, that ends ends in you feeling maybe euphoric for the rest of the day? Well, these are some things that uh, I would like to discuss in a in a further uh, video. Uh, if you want to call this a video, it's just a scene out my window. Okay, thank you very much.